today we have Evo uh, Sapar, if I have spelled it right. Uh, he's a remote work advocate and shaping the future of remote work as the CEO of Remote How. Uh, do log on uh, to Remote How and understand more about their work. And also uh, a, a book uh, that Evo has written. Uh, you can check out that. That is Remote Work is the Way. I'm assuming that's available on Amazon. for order. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Okay, cool. So uh, Evo is a remote work advocate and co-founder of Remote How, the world's leading platform for remote professionals, powered by and for the community of 25,000 plus people from 128 countries. Okay, that's cool. Through various initiatives like uh, Remote How Academy uh, or virtual co-working, together with the world's top remote companies like GitLab, Prezi, Doist, Remote How is on a mission to help everyone achieve freedom of choice where and when they work. So, uh, uh, Evo, uh, can you just take a minute uh, helping us understand your background? How did you end up in remote work? How do you uh, uh, feel, okay, remote work is the future? So, yeah, over to you. Yes, absolutely. Thanks a lot for having me. Um, remote work, if, if when I look back, it's already 10 years, <laughs> 10 years journey. Um, but actually, four years ago, it, it, it started as a business uh, related journey. So I was working remotely for already a couple of years. But uh, then we, we moved to US to, to Austin and, and noticed this huge shift in how people look at work and, and life, the whole experience over possession. And then at the same time, I was leading a team and I had that hard time to find people join the team because of the talent shortage, right? So it kind of started to connect the dots. Maybe we can make people happier by allowing them to basically uh, work whenever they want and, and value the experience over, over possession. Um, while it is at, at, at the same time help businesses uh, find the talent basically anywhere in the world outside of, uh, outside of their location. So fast forward, there was 2017 and now it's 2021. Uh, a lot of things changed. Uh, when we were starting, um, the main challenge was the mindset. So um, most companies, I would say, uh, almost every company didn't believe that remote work uh, is the future and, and the work can be done from anywhere. And then on the other side, for these companies that were already um, kind of accustomed to this uh, to this uh, way of working and, and they were exploring this further, they were asking questions like how to do it um, properly, how to be as productive as possible, as happy as possible, and, and streamline internal uh, processes. So that's why from the day one, we focus on, on education, some of the initiatives that, you, uh, that you've mentioned. Right now in 2021, we help companies enhance their existing employee experience uh, through life learning cycles with top uh, remote and hybrid work experts to basically cultivate a culture of learning uh, within the company because the learning is the way to change, adjust um, organizations that need to truly become uh, remote first. Uh, but that's the, that's the long way to go. Yes, but I think we've all made a good start and continue yes. to uh, expand our understanding of remote work. Cool. So, <clears throat> Can you please explain about the positioning of our uh, remote how in, in, in the industry and where do you wish to take it in the coming years? Yes, absolutely. So as I mentioned earlier, it's all about uh, helping companies, um, helping companies on the front. Uh, there is an employee life cycle from the talent search through hiring, onboarding, team management, professional growth, knowledge management, where in all of these aspects of the employee life cycle, there is learning. And the learning right now with especially shift to hybrid work for uh, the, the, the huge companies that won't ditch offices, but also to companies that are going all remote, there is a lot of stuff that is changing and there is a lot of things in the employee experience uh, that needs to become truly remote first. So you can think of remote how as a platform with missing pieces to the puzzle in your remote first employee experience, where we enable HR teams um, to enhance this employee experience by adding 
uh, live learning to different parts of, um, of their uh, employee journey. We are working with over 200 uh, top remote and hybrid work experts, and they, uh, and they are delivering um, various live learning sessions either during onboarding of different companies, um, professional growth um, cycles. So at the end of the day, we are helping uh, companies cultivate the culture of learning, learn how to do remote or hybrid work uh, for, for different departments, because uh, there is no way <laughs> how we can avoid this uh, change in the, in the future. So we need to learn how to do it, uh, how to do it right. And because uh, the, the, the methods from the past, like self-paced videos, uh, but also offline trainings uh, are, are becoming a thing of a past. Everything is moving to online. Uh, the most efficient ways to learn are, um, are is, is a virtual learning with a peer of with a group of uh, group of peers. That's what we are doing um, uh, on our on our platform. Interesting indeed. Uh, so uh, and I'm quite curious on how did you make this transition from being a director of sales at a company to founder of Remote How. Yes, so um, I've always been dreaming about starting my uh, my own thing. <laughs> I had some uh, I had some uh, um, tries and trials and, and errors uh, prior to that. Um, and when we when we moved to US and, and we noticed this uh, this big shift that is that is uh, that is happening, and I was also with with Shopgate for over five years. I was like, okay, this is this is the moment to to try this out. Uh, but also because um, not only we were preaching to other companies that remote work is the future, but we also started to work remotely. Um, we enabled also ourselves uh, to work in the last four years. We worked for more than a month for from 16 different countries on four on four continents so that also helped us to uh, to 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 meet the lifestyle that we were looking for uh, so that was the kind of transition that happened both on the entrepreneurial side uh, but also on the uh, on the life side um, of, of things so for example for the last one and a half year we lived in in uh, in Vietnam and and that was that was pretty cool <laughs> working with yes. uh, with most of uh, our clients based in the US there was also quite a challenge when it comes to synchronous and asynchronous communication um, so yeah the the the, the shift was uh, was interesting but absolutely i'm i'm not regretting uh, this move sounds great um, <clears throat> so uh, i'm i'm assuming uh, the pandemic uh, starting uh, March of 2020 must have been like uh, a big inflection point for your your company. So how how, how do your numbers stack up uh, since then? Yes. Yeah, so obviously, yes. Like you like you mentioned, the the whole world uh, went remote, and um, we saw an an increase uh, numbers of um, on on our websites of our clients, etc. The interesting point is that. Um, in 2020, the um, most companies still didn't know what they will be doing in the in the future with remote or hybrid. Um, majority of companies were thought, especially companies that were hesitant towards uh, remote, they were like, "Oh, this is just temporary. We'll come back to uh, to the office." Right. Right now, what we see in in, in November 2021 with the uh, all great resignation that is happening all over the world and, and companies are forced to change. Actually now, um, since two quarters, companies are really making strategic uh, decisions that remote and hybrid will, will stay forever. So that's actually a fun fact because last year when pandemic hit, uh, companies uh, at one, and uh, the companies that we've been working with, companies that were taking their existing remote work and hybrid work to next level, uh, froze their their budgets. Then the new companies that started to work remotely, they didn't know if this will be the uh, something temporary or or permanent. Um, so it took a couple of months of uh, of, of big um, big unknown. What will what will happen next? 
Uh, but fortunately this year, um, the market is changing and, and we see this, and this is really amazing to see uh, also in our, uh, in our system, some companies that like in 2019, for instance, were absolutely against remote work and now they're coming back to us and say, hey guys, <laughs> or like against hybrid work. Right now, majority of clients are coming uh, with hybrid work um, stuff. Hey guys, can you, can you help us? So we see the change, but we also see that actually this is just uh, the strategic beginning of uh, how it's changing, especially as more and more companies start to open up uh, to, to to office work while still allowing people to do remote work because this is where the biggest challenge is. Got it. So I think uh, this is the same time that you must have started doing research and uh, about writing a book. So can you take us through uh, uh, your research process for your book and what is your book about? Yes, absolutely. So actually, the book was on my mind for for a long time <laughs> because okay. I loved to write back when I was uh, when I was in high school, then during university, as that was um, the management. There was not that many writing, but and then I remember in November twenty nineteen, um, I was uh, stalking one of my friends, <laughs> who is my 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 good friends, who is a book uh, book agent, um, and and he was like, "Hey, I would love to write a book." let's do something about it, et cetera. And I was like doing this and it was like, Ivo, not now, let's, let's wait. Da, da, da. And then one day uh, a proposal came in and, and he said, hey, let's, uh, let's try it out. Of course, with this publisher, nothing, uh, nothing ever happens, but that was kind of this push. I remember I finalized this first proposal in uh, January, 2020. So before pandemic, uh, and then the topic died. Um, it came back um, after a couple of months so when, when pandemic, um, already happened and the world started to realize that this will be a long long term thing um so yeah it, it's that the whole process for of, of of writing took um i would say over over six months um so quite some time while still uh, working uh, working full time when it comes to the when it comes to the research like the big question was what people are expecting from the from the book that uh, ended up as a title remote work is the way what kind of uh, questions people would be looking for and and who actually is the audience that is um that is a decision making audience because we knew from many studies before pandemic that employees wanted uh, to work remotely but the big change but the big block or uh, was on company side and and then leadership teams, right? So that was the we decided that this is the the main audience. Um, so the business audience that uh, needs to change their mindset uh, that this is how the work will be done forever. And then what are the areas that needs to be um, actually um, either completely changed uh, or adjusted uh, in order to to succeed in the in the distributed environment. So basically, that's what we've been doing at Remote How for already uh, three years uh, at that time. Um, so we knew what are the what are the areas, um, especially looking from the leadership side, from HR side, that we should uh, we should discuss. Um, and then I also didn't want that this is only my point of view, and um, so I invited uh, guests. Um, people that are way smarter in, in, in remote work stuff than I am. Uh, for example, uh, uh, head of remote at, at GitLab or a former uh, chief people officer at GitLab, so the most famous uh, remote company, and the list goes on and on. Um, so basically, it's like a collective, um, collective answer how remote work is the way and how it should be done uh, according to these best practices that remote companies were following prior to pandemic. And now majority of the world needs to really change and not just to replicate the office environment in the, in the virtual setup. Sounds great. And I'm assuming a lot of uh, companies have picked up this book or at least is in their uh, libraries. 
I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, but 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 looking at the sometimes requests that are coming in from uh, people, for example, from Microsoft who like read the book mm-hmm. and like, hey, can we start working together, helping uh, our our clients or, or our employees? I see that it's reaching the the corporate world, and that's where where it resonates best. Um, so yeah, uh, I I hope that it will be changing mindsets and and also giving the uh, the ready instruction um how to how to do it right that's good uh, so moving on to more specific questions on, on uh, remote work so uh, do you think remote work is suitable for certain industries uh, versus some other industries i mean obviously whenever there is a need for in person contact like in person or we need to touch something like hardware <laughs> or yeah. we need to sell something in the shop for instance then of course that might be a challenge um mm. but everywhere where you're lo- using your computer um, um and an internet that absolutely can be done remotely of course mm. we are not saying that everything needs to be 100% remote um a lot of companies that were all remote prior to pandemic they still hosted in person retreats or in person workshops from time to time um mainly they served um as a, as as a place where people were just uh, hanging out together uh, and for for like social uh, purposes rather than actually working together um, so i would say uh in in 90% cases that if someone was working remotely during the pandemic that's absolutely a job that can be done uh, that, that can be done remotely or in a hybrid environment okay so uh, how how should companies evaluate the benefits they have derived from being remote during the pandemic it's almost uh, more than a year and a half so are there any recommendations uh, for frameworks metrics that you have put in your book uh yes so um i would start with asking a question that is like above of the um, of of everything if there is a trust within your company if your leadership team uh, trusts uh, individual employees and vice versa because if there is fundamental lack of trust then any sort of framework uh, productivity tracking time tracking goals performance like the sy- the system can be cheated right um yes. so so we strongly emphasize um to first look at the culture and how people think about their everyday work uh, what are their relationships uh, with each other um not just looking at the trust for instance but um I don't know if you've heard of a term called radical candor. No, no, I have not. Yeah, so radical candor is basically giving the direct feedback uh, without sugar coating. Um, so, if, for instance, um, something bad happened, um, I'm telling you this uh, without, of course, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, harsh. I'm not, um, I'm, I'm, I'm still nice. But if I didn't like something, I don't know that you haven't done something, or you haven't done something correct, or I have a suggestion for you to improve things. We are just openly talking about, it, right? Um, yes. And unfortunately, in the previous, in the previous uh, office uh, environment, there was a lot of games around it and and people um not always being with uh with um with honest with each other um and that's another area where of course i can put a, a lot of frameworks and and metrics but if we won't be open and and honest with each other we won't be able to improve things because there is a framework 1.0 but then it basically there is an iteration happening every week every month you're adjusting you're tweaking stuff in the way how you operate right um so i would strongly encourage um everyone who listens to to answer this fundamental questions on the culture side of things before moving on um to frameworks and and metrics because these are very different um depending on the um on the uh, on the department 
one thing that is absolutely important when you're um, when you're past the, the, the culture aspect is that everything is outcome based. No longer nine, nine to five, no longer eight hours, um, absolutely no more than eight hours, like 10, 12, 14 hours, like these days are over. Um, one, uh, because more and more people realize, especially last year, that their well being, that their mental health is. Uh, is extremely important. Yeah. A lot of people also started to reevaluate uh, what's really driving um, their day-to-day lives. And first time it's no longer only work. Um, so really focus on what is actually uh, delivered rather than how much time someone, uh, someone spent. And that's really tied back to how leaders uh, are managing their teams. Unfortunately, most managers are bad managers. <laughs> that's yes. that true. And that's dependent from remote, hybrid, office work, just from the principles. We have a lot of bad managers and this transition that is now happening um, allows a lot of people to truly um, upskill or reskill themselves to create better, uh, better work environments. And employees shouldn't be afraid of saying things that they notice and then the spirit of radical candor which you can actually look up it's a, it's like a very well known framework yeah. and 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 be open about this feedback so can you highlight uh, an individual uh, consulting case of yours when you were talking to uh, a company on remote work, on the remote work also so how did you kind of understand uh, uh, if the remote work culture is right or, or wrong and how did you advise them about changing it? So this part is also like uh, heavily in my mind uh, because I also run a remote work company and a lot mm-hmm. of people report to, me, report to me as well. Mm-hmm. Sure, yes. So um, first of all, you need to um, gather a lot of data, gather a lot of data from your, uh, from your, from your, um, from your company internally. Don't make assumptions. We still see companies coming to us and say, hey, these are our problems, we need to fix them. And we're asking like, hey, are you sure that this is the problem and this is sure. not maybe one of the sub problems or actually this is completely something else, right? Mm-hmm. So there's really a lot of stuff that uh, needs to be done on auditing the, the current mm-hmm. uh, way of working, right? We talked about culture. Um, then there is, a, there is a communication, right? Uh, how you communicate, async, sync. Um, do you have an internal communication policy? Are people getting messages at 10 p.m. on Slack or, or Microsoft Teams, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, are they forced to respond at that time? Then uh, you're looking at meetings culture, right? Um, do you have too many meetings and you don't have time to do actual work? Are these meetings um, organized in a good way? Is there always agenda? Do you always have minutes and, and action items, right? Is it is it clear why everyone is on this call? Um, for example, Elon Musk says that if you're on the on the, if you're on a meeting where you think you shouldn't be, you should just leave immediately, right? Um, mm-hmm. Jeff Bezos is um, uh, does uh, send out um, an instruction that before each meeting there should be a memo uh, and everyone is reading the memo when the meeting starts and then if they're good they can just add some comments suggestions uh, and and they can all they can immediately leave the meeting if they don't need to be there right so those are the kind of we are moving from very high level overview to really small things that should be evaluated Uh, what is the current status then you're moving on to work organization, like right? how the work is planned. Uh, is it very ad hoc or, or you have clear goals, uh, how it's uh, managed on a daily basis. Is there a transparency in, in, in your work? Do, do you know who is working on what? If you, of course, mm-hmm. should know, right? So the, the transparency, the transparency also in communication, right? Are we always communicating one-on-one, creating silos, or we are have open channels when, when, when people are discussing, right? Um, then we are moving to collaboration, right? How we are collaborating in, um, in an online manner. Uh, how are the workshops run? Uh, are they um, effective? What kind of tools we are using for them? You know, and the list goes on and on. So basically yeah. at the end of the day, you are basically uh, first uh, doing a very in-depth 
um, analysis um, with your with your with your team with your teams um, through surveys, but also through one on one interviews. Then you're analyzing your policies, um, how people are actually working. So you really gather as much as possible data on the status there is today, and then based on this, you can move forward and see what kind of areas uh, needs to be uh, needs to be adjusted because. Without this proper assessment, you would simply fail. Yeah, got it. So, uh, like just taking forward this point on culture and the other tertiary points, have you come across, let's say, a startup which which has done really well in identifying the right culture that could work for them in the remote setup? And I mean, would you know any of such startups? Yeah, I think if you if you look at the uh, reviews on Glassdoor or on, yeah. or on uh, comparably companies such as uh, HubSpot, such as GitLab, such as Buffer, such as Doist, um, sure. they have outstanding uh, reviews about culture uh, and and just about in general the place uh, that that the workplace from from their employees. So um, I would really look up to, to, to these companies, automatic mm -hmm. also, right? So all these companies that were doing remote uh, before pandemic and they had time to make mistakes and, and improve things, mm, th those are the ones uh, that were pioneers and, and we should look up to them as, as inspirations. Got it. And any other uh, enterprise level company that has done well with uh, establishing a right remote work culture? Um, I would say that um, HubSpot is mm -hmm. uh, coming to 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 this uh, to this layer of of, of enterprise um, level company. Of course, you have companies such as uh, IBM, for instance, that basically had first remote workers in, in 1970s. Um, so definitely there's a lot of um, good, uh, good know-how that, uh, that comes from, uh, from them. Um, also, Microsoft um, is, is really good with, uh, with remote and, and hybrid. This is one of our clients. Um, and, and we see that uh, how, it's, how it's working for them is, uh, is, 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 is really good. Mm, but like I mentioned in the beginning, those are still very early days for large, large companies mm -hmm. to make this change permanent. Um, so probably we should uh, uh, meet again in a year <laughs> and then <laughs> see sure. who really, who really uh, succeeded and, and who failed. To be honest with you, there will be a lot of failures. There will be a lot of blood and tears from companies mm. that didn't do it right. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how it works. Not not everyone will uh, will succeed. Yes. Uh, so that those are good important insights. Uh, how how about hybrid work model, especially with larger companies? Uh, is it is it only uh, experimented by these larger companies or you're also seeing a lot of startups experiment with, experimenting with hybrid work model uh startups are rather going all remote um okay. so that's that's what we see startup scale-ups um mm -hmm. most companies that had offices had their long-term leases um stay with this i'm saying mm -hmm. most we also saw some that were like okay we're terminating everything and we're going remote um but uh, but hybrid is uh, is something that will stay, uh, mm. but it's also the hardest model. So um, that will cause a lot of uh, issues uh, for these large companies, and especially as large companies have uh, the biggest um, the biggest legacy that needs to be fixed, uh, especially on the on the leadership side. Mm, so so this is where we see. Um, the the biggest challenge with the with the shift um, on the on the large lar large company side they're also moving slower right um, so 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 they need to finally become more mm -hmm. more agile more open more transparent um, and not just say that they are X Y Z but this is just a theory and the phrase on their uh, on their career page but actually it needs to become the become the reality and that will take some time 
Okay. And you also, have you also seen the trend uh, to going globally distributed or is it like locally remote? What, what is the trend going to be? Oh, yes, absolutely global. Um, again, more uh, for um, startups and scale-ups um, that they're already doing this and hiring outside of their countries. Uh, bigger companies, uh, this is something that we rather see um, growing slower, obviously. Mm, but because of the talent shortage, it will be, it will be also uh, the, the thing that will, that will continue to, to expand. Right. And what, what tools do you think are absolutely doing well just because of a lot of companies going remote and, and you've also liked working on, working on and with those tools? Oh, yes. Um, everything that is um, simplifying and optimizing uh, daily work with uh, around productivity, um, meetings, uh, this, this, this space is, is going through a tremendous uh, change um right now to either make meetings more efficient or um remove the certain number mm -hmm. of meetings from from every day and start instead of shift it to async uh, either for text or uh, or video uh, obviously companies are helping with the global employment um so you can hire people anywhere in the world are are doing great mm -hmm. So those are the two things uh, to, to um, come to my mind right now. There are, of course, uh, some companies that are um, they're trying to compete with the enterprise uh, tech stack. Um, and, and I'm really curious to see how this, how this will go. Um, I think one of the interesting companies is ClickUp um, mm -hmm. because they basically um, started to, to take over um, multiple tech stacks that the companies were using uh, and just put it into, into one. So there's a lot of optimization, but there's also a lot of uh, innovation uh, happening in, in, in this space. Uh, plus also on the learning side, because companies, um, because um, employees started to be accustomed more and more with like video calls and, and just like learning this way and um, ability to learn with people from other countries, from other industries, from other companies. Uh, that's also something what we, what we see is, is growing. So um, definitely there's also a big shift in the, in the way of learning. Any other uh... Uh, resources that you recommend that we can publish on the on the blog uh, on our uh, transcript for this uh, you can please share it offline with us we will publish that yes of course uh, we have over uh, 40 different um, free resources in our in our um, catalog so you can just simply uh, go to remote how and look up our resources um, other than that, um, Doist has a lot of good stuff. Buffer, um, also at GitLab with their uh, with their um, with their handbook. So those are um, the couple of things that come to my mind uh, right off the bat. Sounds good. So can you just uh, identify one or two companies for the audience where you you distinctly remember they tried out something new during the pandemic for remote work and it kind of worked out and what the, what was that oh wow well, that's a um that's a tough one um whew, very specific you have there's so <laughs> many uh, so many different ways how how we can go about it but do yeah. you have some special uh, areas uh, that you uh, would like it, to highlight in 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 terms of employee engagement let's say they, they found out that uh, working on the, the mental health of their employees was very important, especially during the pandemic. So can you think of any company that, that did something extraordinary for like uh, maintaining the, the, the mental health of their employees? Yes. Um, that's actually not the topic that, uh, that we are dealing with um, mm -hmm. directly. Um, but on the employee engagement, um, we have a lot of uh, clients that are using uh, Donut. Um, so basically uh, a way how you can uh, set on autopilot uh, um, employee engagement um, between your like new hires or people just in general 
um, connecting more and more in the virtual way. You're just adding this to Slack and, and Donut is connecting people for um, for virtual uh, virtual coffees. Mm, so that would be would be one way. Um, and then of course, uh, that's maybe more general uh, answer, but companies that understood that virtual happy hour is not, um, it's not for everyone and you should not uh, over organize them. <laughs> that was okay. the, those, those were the ones that uh, didn't uh, come to us like, hey, we're trying with this company culture thing. We're organizing virtual uh, happy hours, but people stopped coming to this versus people that were like, hey, we know it's um, you, it, you can come if you want and we are not forcing you, but also we will be organizing smaller ones with different themes. Um, it won't be only about just like hanging out and then drinking beer together, but uh, there will be a book club, there will be a movie club, there will, on one, we'll talk about sports. So really understanding that this free time can be also personalized. Um, these companies were, uh, were really doing this right. And any companies, uh, uh... That they tried out something new on employee monitoring, see, which is a very gray area, right? Like not a lot of employees would like to get monitored. So how do the end, uh, companies ensure that the productivity was right without having to monitor? Yeah, um, one of my good friends uh, that runs a, a company that that uh, basically offers uh, time, um, time tracking software, mm. Mm told me one interesting thing, how you can look at this kind of software. So um, how they're, for example, also using this uh, for, for, for their employees. They're, for example, tracking if someone is working past uh, the time when they're supposed to work, right? So in the standard, it will be 5 p.m., but if you have flexible working hours, then it, it, it can be different. But if you're working uh, past your working hours or if you're working over the weekend, uh, they're automatically cutting off your uh, your Slack, your email, uh, so you cannot work. So actually, the tool that is aimed to um, improve productivity and like measure what's happening, it's also helping you um, uh, avoid uh, avoid overworking. So um, I'm. I'm absolutely not saying that these uh, kind of tools are uh, are bad, should or should not be used. Uh, but there is a fundamental um, question that we've discussed earlier around trust. Um, yeah. So first, there needs to be a trust, and then we can look at how we can automate uh, things to improve the transparency of work, right? Because also transparency is one of the uh, most important uh, values that that needs to be um, in place when when we are looking at this. So. Absolutely use tools, uh, but before that, do the uh, do the do the homework. Sounds good. Uh, that's I think is going to be very important for a lot of distributed companies. I agree. Yes. So as my final question, any folks uh, that you admire uh, uh, in in the remote work industry uh, for for their contributions in the last few years to the remote work industry and. I ask you this question because I want to kind of reach out to them and do my next uh, podcast with them. Yes, sure. Um, phew, the, the list is really long. Uh, so probably yeah. best is if you <laughs> if you go to uh, go to our platform and we have yeah. over uh, two hundred ten right now experts uh, approved. We have like a, a repository, and if okay. you come across someone that has an interesting background that is relevant for your. Um, for your uh, for your audience um you can just uh, send me send me a couple of names and and i will and i will uh, connect you guys sounds great Ivo. i think uh, uh, we would definitely like to get into writing a very detailed transcript for this podcast and make mm -hmm. sure that we tag a lot of people that you've mentioned uh, and spoken good of mm -hmm. and uh, we look forward to all